record the session and I will provide, I'll send to your email address, a link to see this recording. Uh, probably won't be ready till tomorrow morning, but um, usually the recorded sessions, uh, I don't get them up to people until the next morning, just because sometimes it takes my computer all night to process it. So we're into trig, huh? Is this your first um, exposure to trig? Okay, but I mean you haven't ever taken it before geometry. Okay. Um, trig can be a little challenging at first. It's kind of like a foreign language. It's like learning Greek almost. You're looking at all these things that you're not familiar with, sines, cosines, tangents. Um, so you just kind of have to get used to it. Uh, you, this Sokotoa here, you, you know what that means? Hold on a second. Let me, I can take a screenshot and then write on these things. Do you know what that stands for? That means that the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. That's what SOH means. So if I said the sine of that angle, sigma, it would be A over C. So the sine of sigma would be A, the opposite side, over C, the hypotenuse. Okay? And what does the ka mean? Well, right below it, it says what the cosine is. The cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In other words, this SOCATOA tells you what the sine is, what the cosine is, and what the tangent is. And the tangent is the TOA. That means the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay? Now, let's talk about that for a moment because when we're talking about the adjacent side to that angle, in actuality, there's two adjacent sides. B is adjacent, and so is C, right? They are always referring to the side that is not the hypotenuse. So when they give you adjacent, it's one of the short sides of that right triangle. It's never C. The hypotenuse is never the adjacent side regardless of whether you're talking about the adjacent in tangent or the adjacent in cosine. Okay, so before we go on to these problems, let me just test you. I'm going to draw some right triangles. And I want you to tell me make that 30 degrees we'll make that mm, we're just going to make that theta i'm not going to label it with a specific angle i'm going to call it theta okay and this is going to be a three four five triangle so if i said to you what is the cosine of theta what is it Look at the ka. You've got to always refer to that until you get it memorized. Figure out what the ka means. Yeah, the ka is cosine. In other words, the first three letters, are, they really should separate these. This is the way it's taught in most places, like this. They put a space in there. Because this is for the sine, that the middle one is for the cosine, and the right one is for the tangent. So the ka means what? What does C-A-H mean? 
cosine mean cosine is what? Right. What's the A and the H mean? The C stands for the cosine, but what's the A and the H mean? Okay. What's the A stand for? What's the A stand? The adjacent. Exactly. So if I'm looking at theta, and I want to take the adjacent side and divide it by the hypotenuse, what do I get? What ratio? Okay, good. What is the tangent of theta? Correct. And what's the sine of theta? Yeah. Now, incidentally, this Sokotoa here only applies to right triangles. In other words, if I make a triangle like this, and it's 6, 7, 8, and there's no right triangles there, and I say, what is the sine of theta? You can't really figure it out yet because there's no right angle. In other words, Sokotoa is only for right triangles. So if I don't have a right triangle, then I can't say that the sine of theta is 6 over 7 or 6 over 8. Depends on what this angle is. But one of the things that is true is that Signs of angles, trig functions of angles are always constant. In other words, the sine of 30 degrees is always one half. If I have a right triangle and that's 30 degrees, then that is one half of whatever the hypotenuse is. Since the sine of 30 degrees is opposite side 1 divided by the hypotenuse 2. And this could be a 10-20 10, 10 root 3 triangle. And that ratio is always the same. In other words, even if I extend that triangle out to however far you want to extend it, as long as that's a right angle, then this total side, x, divided by y, that total side, is going to be a one-half ratio, no matter the size of the triangle. As long as it is a right triangle, then the sine of 30 degrees does not change, ever. Sine of 30 degrees is always one-half. And the cosine of 30 degrees is always square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent of 45 degrees is always 1. Okay? So, let's solve some of these problems. So, they give us a right triangle. They want us to solve for W. And we got to use a trig function to do it. So, the first thing to do is... There's my known angle, 21 degrees. So I got to figure out which trig function is going to allow me to solve for W. What trig function relates 125 and W? Is it the sine, the cosine? There's no opposite. We don't know this side over here. We do know the adjacent. It's 125. Okay. So I know the adjacent. I'm trying to solve for the hypotenuse. So let's use the cosine function. In other words, the, the cosine of 21 degrees is equal to 125 over W. Okay. Now, Cosine of 21 degrees is a number, always. You look it up in your calculator. And so, in other words, I'm going to replace that with a number, and I can solve for W. 
W is going to be 125 divided by the cosine of 21 degrees. What kind of calculator do you use, Brandon? Have they forced you to go to the TI Inspire yet at Dakota Ridge? Okay. So, and you don't have a TI-84, but you have a calculator that will let you do trig functions? Okay. Do you have it in front of you now? Or it's the one out about out of juice? Okay. As long as you have a calculator that will let you do trig functions, then go ahead and figure out what 125 divided by cosine of 21 degrees is. You can, well, I'm not familiar with your calculator, but usually you type the trig function first. In other words, you hit the cosine key. Okay. Let's just check one thing, and that's whether you're in radians or degrees. So put the cosine of 60 in there and tell me what you get for an answer, and that will tell me whether you're in degrees or not. Because cosine of 60 is one-half. Okay, good. Now... Put 125 divided by the cosine of 21 degrees and see what you get. Okay. Now, does that make sense in our problem over here that it would be 133? Round, round lengths to the nearest tenth. Wait, what was it? 133 and what? So 133, what? If I'm rounding to the nearest, if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, what is it? You gave it to me, right. You gave it to me to the nearest hundredth. And they don't want it to the nearest hundredth. They want it to the nearest tenth. So you got to round the eight up to a nine. And yes, you're right. That does make sense. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of a triangle. So it definitely has to be greater than 125. And that is in a proper relationship. If that said 1300, then I would say no, that wouldn't make sense to have it be 1300. So I always like kind of doing a ballpark check when I get an answer. I want to make sure it's in the ballpark. It's not off by a factor of 10 or anything. Okay. All right. Let's look at the next one here. Hold on. Let me just check my time. We got 15 minutes here. So, so what trig function with regards to that angle, 44 degrees, relates 98 and X? Correct? No? Remember the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So the hypotenuse is the bottom. The X is the adjacent. So what trig function deals with the opposite and the adjacent? Okay, give me the equation. Uh huh. Okay, now solve that for x. Before you solve for tan of 44, solve it for x. In other words, let's get x in the numerator. How do I do that? Yeah, pretty much. There, I mean, I'm going to multiply both sides by x, okay? So it's really x times tan of 44 
equals 98. And then I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm going to divide both sides by tan of 44. So that's going to be my answer, is 98 divided by tan of 44. Go ahead and come up with a number, and then round it off to the nearest tenth. So 101.5. Would he take, you have a man or a woman teacher? A man? Okay. Just out of curiosity, where'd your mom uh, get my name? Was it from a teacher or the counselor's office or from the Ken Carl newspaper or do you know? Oh, okay. Uh, reference. That's even better. Okay, does 101 make sense? And here's why. If this angle is 44, this angle is 46. These two angles, the two acute angles in a right triangle, are always complementary. They're always going to add to 90 degrees. Because the third angle is a right angle, and all three angles have to total 180. So these two always add to 90. And now there's another rule in geometry that says the smallest side of a triangle has to be opposite the smallest angle. And the largest side has to be opposite the largest angle. So this 101 is bigger than 98, which is good because it's opposite a 46 degree angle. The 98 is opposite a 44 degree angle. So that makes sense. And we know that the hypotenuse is going to be something greater than 101. So everything passes my smell test here, or ballpark test, what I call it. All right, now number C, we're looking at a non right triangle. I'm just thinking about it for a moment. Do you have the law of science? Have you had the law of signs? How in the world do they expect you to solve this? Well, let's just look at this problem for a little bit. I, I know how to solve it using the law of signs, but this is pretty basic trig, and you don't generally learn the law of signs until you've been in trig for a few weeks. Um, but I think you almost have to know the law of signs to be able to solve this problem. Um, let me just go over it with you, and, and you tell me whether this... Ah, okay. Okay. That's fine. We can actually... You can solve that, but it involves using the law of signs. So I would have to teach the law of signs. The law of signs isn't hard. I'll just tell you what it is. We won't use it. But what the law of signs says is this. The sine of an angle versus the length of its opposite side is a constant in any triangle. In other words, it's equal to the sine of the other angle versus its opposite side. And it's also equal to the sine of the third angle versus its opposite side. So that is the law of sines. And so as long as you know one angle, and if we look at this particular problem, C, uh, I know an angle and an opposite side. I know that angle, and I know its opposite side. So that fixes the relationship. So now I can solve for this. In other words, I could say sine of 18 divided by 21 is equal to the sine of 117 divided by y. Has to be true. 
Okay, and notice the only unknown there is y. In other words, sine 18 is a number, sine of 117 is a number that you're going to get out of your calculator and you'll be able to solve for y. And the law of sines is not that hard. I mean, this is pretty. that's pretty easy, don't you agree? At the top. Yeah, well, so now you're a step ahead of the game. You're, when they, if they do give you the law of sines this year, you'll be ready for it. Although they might not. <clears throat> um, no, they may, uh, they may not even introduce you to the law of sines. Notice that that was the only non-right triangle. Every other problem is a right triangle. And with right triangles, you don't need the law of sines ever. With right triangles, you can use the definition of the trig functions, so Katoa, because that those apply to right triangles only. Okay? So, in this problem, number D, how do you get X? They haven't given us this angle. Hold on a second. They have not given us that angle. That angle, and they have not given us that angle. We know this is a 90 degree angle, the right angle, but we don't have these angles here. So how am I going to relate X to either 15 or 12? If I had those angles, I could do it, but I can't do it. You, you can't say the sine of 90 degrees. In other words, the sine of 90 degrees is not X. Actually, it is X over X. <laughs> the sine of 90 degrees is 1, but it doesn't allow you to solve for X. However, there is another way to solve this for X. What's the Pythagorean theorem say? You have that? Yeah. Okay. Well, they're giving us two sides, right? In other words, for this particular problem, we're not going to use trig. I'm going to say x squared equals 15 squared plus 12 squared. Well, that's 225. That's 144. So x squared is equal to 369. What's the square root of 369? That's what x is. What is that? It must be 17 now. 17 would end in a 9. It's got to be close to 17. What is it? Can you do that on your calculator? Nineteen point two. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an integer. Uh, but we solve it. Now, see, this is a little puzzling. Hold on a second. Use trig ratios to solve for the variable. Have you had inverse trig functions? Have you ever had arc cosine or inverse cosine? or arc sine or arc cosine because that's another way to you just started this and you just got to Sokotoa right that's what it looks like okay which means that the only way I can solve D with your current level of trig is by using the Pythagorean theorem in other words knowing that X squared is equal to 15 squared plus 12 squared. And that allows you to solve for x. But you can't really use a trig function because they haven't given you these angles. Now, in practicality, if you, if you had a little bit more trig, we'd be able to solve for this angle because the tangent of that angle is 15 over 12. There's kind of another way to solve this. Ooh. No, there isn't. This is a tricky one. This almost looks like a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. You know what a 3, 4, 5 right triangle is? It, it should, 
Well, it's the lowest perfect Pythagorean right triangle. And what I mean by that is that there is no triangle that has lower numbers. They're all integers. This is it. That's the lowest. And the next lowest is a 5, 12, 13. Where that's 5, that's 12, and that's 13. And these two triangles are going to, I won't say haunt you, <laughs> but you'll be dealing with them for the next three years. Sophomore, junior, and senior. So remember these two right triangles. They're very important. They're going to come up a ton. When you go to take your AC or SAT test, um, you're going to see multiple problems that it's really advantageous to recognize that it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, so if I give you a triangle like this, and I say that's 30, and that's 40, what's the hypotenuse? Yeah, in other words, it's not just three, four, five triangles that are special, it's any multiple. I could have a 6, 8, 10. In other words, when I say you want to recognize it, when you see 6 and 8, you're saying, oh, that's that's a multiple of 2 of a 3, 4, which means this has to be twice. So if you recognize a 3, 4, 5 triangle, you can frequently fill in the unknown side without doing the Pythagorean theorem, and that saves you a lot of time. Okay, So it's definitely worth memorizing the fact that these kind of are special two triangles here, 3, 4, 5. And not as much, but you'll certainly see a 5, 12, 13 also, periodically. All right. Um, got time for another one. Let's do E. Now, on E, they do give you an angle and a side. In other words, they give us 10, and they give us the angle. So this is a different problem than D was. D didn't give us any angle. We need one of these acute angles to solve it using trig functions. And that's why I went back and looked at the directions, because the directions say solve all of these using trig functions, and you can't do D. You can use trig functions, but you got to know inverse trig functions. So with what they've taught you so far, you really couldn't do D using trig. But you can do you can do E. So what trig functions relates the angle 70 degrees, the side 10, and the variable x? Is that sine, cosine, or tangent? So ka toa. Memorize that. Memorize that. I'll give you a way to memorize it. When my brother when I was a little kid, my brother had an ingrown toenail. You know what he had to do? He had to soak a toa. He had to soak his toe. Okay? So when I think of it, I think of this grimy, infected big toe that he has to soak in hot water to cure it. So he had to soak a toa. That's the way I remember, and that works. Whatever works. Memory is very important in all math, and frequently it's figuring out what's the, the shortest, most efficient way to memorize something. Um, or little rhymes that help you memorize something, or just the sound of something. Slope is rise over run. There is a ring to that. Uh, ten years from now, you should remember that slope is rise over run, just because it does. It has a certain ring to it. So, what equation can we write? We'll at least write it here. We don't need to solve it. But which one relates 10 to x? Yeah. So, give me the equation. Always start with the trig. Once you've determined the trig function, then make sure that's on the left side of your equation. So cosine of what equals what?
Yeah, and now you know how to solve that. Since these trig functions are just numbers, that's a number you're going to get out of your calculator. Now, just one last thing. If that angle is 70, this one's 20. Notice that had they not given us the 70 and they had only given us the 20, we would have used the sine function, right? Because we would have been looking for the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of 20 is also equal to 10 over x. And remember that. These things are complementary. If the sine of 30 equals the cosine of 60, always. The sine of 19 equals the cosine of 71. So there's that relationship with trig also. Bradley, I'm going, or excuse me, it's Brandon, correct? Brandon, is that what everybody calls you, Brandon? Okay. Uh, I'm going to let you go and um, tell your mom. She knows how to go to my website and schedule appointments. She scheduled this one. Um, somebody at least does. And um, if she has a PayPal account, she can use PayPal to pay. If she doesn't want to open a PayPal account or doesn't have one, she can also just send me a check. I you know, like I said, I live in the King Carl area. So um, in terms of paying for future sessions, there's no charge for this session. My first half hour is a free one. But the other sessions, I do ask for people to pay um, for somebody that lives so close by. I wouldn't necessarily ask them to pay in advance, but she can do that. If she doesn't want to pay in advance, that's okay also. I'll send her an envoice, but I would need her email address. Um, so she can do whatever in terms of payment. Okay. And um, have a good Thanksgiving, and maybe we'll talk again. All right, Brandon.